Saying yes with your finger, hazard lights on the highway, kissing your mezcal. Keep watching for 22 random, but very helpful things you need to know about living in Mexico in 2022. For the best advice about moving to Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alex and I moved to Mexico from the US in 2017. I've called Querétaro home ever since. This is my first video of 2022. I am so excited to be filming, to be back. Happy New Year to all of you. I am not in Querétaro. I am actually in a little beach town with a big reputation. Sayulita, and don't worry, I've got a first impressions vlog coming for you soon, but today on my channel, I'm sharing a video that I've wanted to share for a long, long time, and the new year seemed like just the perfect opportunity to do so. In today's video, I'm sharing 22 things that you need to know about living in Mexico in 2022. This list includes cultural norms, some of them big and some of them small, all of them that I had no idea existed before I moved to Mexico. I want to save you some time, save you some headaches, and share these things with you now so you can be aware of these random, quirky, funny, interesting <laughs> things about living in Mexico before you get here so you can hit the ground running. Number one, always have six pesos on you free bathrooms, free public bathrooms, free privately owned bathrooms that they don't care if you come in and use are not really a thing in Mexico. And you want to make sure that you always have those six pesos on you so you can pay to enter a bathroom. Kind of a bonus tip with this one, after you pay your six pesos, make sure to grab your paper, the toilet paper from the attendant. The toilet paper is usually kept up front with the person who's handling the money. And if you go into the stall without grabbing it, well, you're, you're out of luck. Number two, no one wants your big bills. Change is a hot, hot commodity here in Mexico. And people are very, very reluctant to break your big bills, to break a 500, in some cases, to even break a 200. And in a lot of places, even places that you wouldn't expect to be this way, the OXO, which is Mexico's version of 7-Eleven, essentially a convenience store. You go into an OXO, you try to pay for something, they want exact change. And a lot of times they'll tell you, sorry, we can't break your 200, we can't break your 500. So if you're not used to carrying around coins, get used to it in Mexico and look for every opportunity that you can to break those big $500 bills. Number three, Mexican Spanish has its own vocabulary. If you're thinking about moving to Mexico, it's a really, really good idea to spend time familiarizing yourself with Mexico specific words, phrases, and pronunciation. I remember my first month in Mexico, I was trying to get our internet installed and kept referring to it as Wi-Fi which is how Wi-Fi is pronounced in Spain where I had lived previously. Got a lot of funny looks, there was a lot of confusion until someone finally said, Wi-Fi? One great way to get acclimated to the Spanish that's spoken in Mexico before you're even actually in Mexico is taking online language classes with Lingoda. At Lingoda, you can learn Spanish from native level speakers from wherever you are in the world. I've taken classes with teachers from Mexico, as well as teachers from other places in the Spanish speaking world. And it's a great way to get accustomed to different accents, to learn slang and local expressions. When you're logged into Lingoda, click on a class and then click on the teacher's profile picture to learn more about them and to see where in the world they're based. This teacher, Livia, is located in Mexico and in her profile, she shares that she's from Mexico and has been teaching Spanish for over 10 years. 
You can learn more about my own personal experience with Lingoda in this video. I share all the details about the platform, how it works, what classes are like, and why I think it is the best online language school for people who actually want to learn Spanish. If your New Year's resolution is to take your Spanish to the next level, I'm talking finally be able to have a conversation in Spanish, then the Lingoda Sprint Challenge is just what you need to stay committed and to stay motivated. The Lingoda Sprint Challenge is an intensive language challenge where you're taking either 15 classes or 30 classes a month for 60 days. If you finish all of your classes, then you have the opportunity to earn either 50% or 100% cash back. Talk about a New Year's incentive. The Sprint registration closes on February 1st and classes start on February 11th. Sign up now with my link, which is in the description box below, and use my voucher code for $25 off your deposit. Number four, most business is done in person. One of the first videos that I did for my YouTube channel was things that I would wish I'd known before moving to Mexico. I did five things in that video, covered five items, and a lot of them had to do with renting an apartment, setting up a house, in Mexico. And one of the items that I touched on in that video is the fact that my landlord comes over to our house every single month to collect the rent in person. We've tried to set up direct deposit with her, but she wants to see us each month. It's just the way that things are done in Mexico. When Taylor and I are talking about this in-person aspect of doing business in Mexico, we often refer to it as la confianza or the confidence, the trust. People want to see your face to know that they can trust you in a business dealing. You've been putting your Spanish learning on the back burner because you're thinking that when you get to Mexico, you can just do everything online. I'm here to tell you that is not going to work. So there you go, another reason to sign up for the Lingoda Sprint Challenge. Number five, ahorita doesn't mean right now. If you hear ahorita and you're trying to get somebody's timeline down, well, sorry, but there is no timeline. <laughs> It's very indefinite. It will happen at some point, maybe in the future. But if you hear your friend that you're supposed to be, they're supposed to be meeting you somewhere and they tell you that they're gonna be there ahorita, then uh, hope, you, hope you have a book to read. Number six, Mexicans say yes with their finger. In Mexico, this is especially common when you're eating with someone and maybe you ask them a question and they have their mouth full. Instead of simply nodding yes, you will get an affirmative response with this. Sometimes it's accompanied by a head nod, but I love this little C finger. I think it is so, so cute. I even got a tattoo of it when I was in Mexico City as my little homage to Mexico itself. And yes, the C finger. Number seven, Mexicans say thank you with their arm. Speaking of hand signals, speaking of gestures, in Mexico, you may see someone do this, which I thought was really, really aggressive when I first moved here. I, I honestly thought it was kind of like giving someone the finger, flipping them the bird, whatever, but this is a way to say thank you. You'll see it a lot if you're out driving, if you let somebody into your lane. Don't be freaked out. Don't go into like <laughs> road rage overdrive if you are out and about in the streets of Mexico and you see someone, another driver, give you the thank you arm. Number eight, Mexico City is just Mexico. When Mexicans are talking about Mexico City, Ciudad de Mexico, they will often refer to it as just Mexico. So if you've got plans, you're traveling, and you're saying, oh, voy a Mexico, you're going to Mexico City. So save yourself some time. You can drop the Ciudad de, when you say Mexico, when you say Mexico, everyone knows that you're talking about the capital. Number nine, Bus travel in Mexico can be luxurious. Bus travel in Mexico, especially if you're going on those first class, those premier lines like ETN, Primera Plus, ADO, it can be really, really comfortable. 
Bus travel is great in Mexico. It goes absolutely everywhere and overnight buses are huge and really, really convenient. In fact, for this New Year's, this long weekend in Sayulita, we took a bus from Querétaro to Puerto Vallarta. It was an overnight bus. I think it was something like 11 and a half hours, but it was very, very reasonably priced, very, very comfortable. And because we went overnight, we arrived first thing in the morning, we saved on a night of accommodation and got here, got to Sayulita at a reasonable reasonable hour. Number 10, watch out for topes. If you are going to have a car down here, if you are going to be renting on occasion, then make sure you watch out for topes, which are speed bumps. And these are not your mama's speed bumps. <laughs> they are super high, they are super frequent, and you need to keep an eye out because if you hit one of those going at full speed, oof, your bumper, your muffler, the undercarriage of your car is gonna have something to say about it. Number 11, don't freak out when you see hazard lights. Mexican drivers love, love, love to use their hazard lights to use their flashers for a variety of reasons, but probably the most popular reason is to indicate that they are slowing down, that there's traffic up ahead to let the driver behind them know, hey, something's changing on the road up here. You don't need to freak out when you see them on the road and it's a good idea to get used to using them yourself if that's not something that you do already. Now, while hazard lights are really common, turn signals are not. So don't count on the driver in front of you using their turn signal as an indicator. You need to be careful and oof, don't follow anyone too closely. Number 12, beware of unlit pilot lights. Hazard lights on, pilot lights off in Mexico. I don't even know how many times I have gotten to an Airbnb, in some cases even in a hotel, and the shower's cold. When I say something to the management, say something to the Airbnb host, it turns out that the pilot light is not lit. It is pretty common practice in Mexico to switch off the pilot light until you're getting ready to use hot water. So sometimes just to avoid this, I will message my Airbnb host prior to even arriving to the property and just say, you know, hey, is there anything I need to know? Will the pilot light be lit? And this is kind of just a little reminder to them that, hey, sounds like this person wants a hot shower. Number 13, always have change on hand for tips. Tipping culture is big in Mexico, and while people aren't tipping as much as you would necessarily in the US, where 15 to 20% is pretty standard, people are tipping much more frequently in Mexico, especially for the smaller services that people are providing for you. I'm talking about the person who's bagging your groceries, the person who loads and unloads your luggage from the bus. It's a good idea to have change ready to go in your pocket so you don't have to dig around in your purse, dig around in your wallet. Number 14, not all tap water is created equal. I've been brushing my teeth with the tap water since the day I got to Mexico. And I think over the years, my, my gut biome, what have you, is pretty accustomed. Here's where that not all tap water is created equal thing comes in. A few weeks ago, about, about a month ago, I was traveling in another part of Mexico and was brushing my teeth with the tap water at the hotel there and I, I got sick. Someone brought up to me the fact that in, in that area of the country that the water filtration was, it, it was a big issue there. And that makes total sense. There are those same sort of issues in the United States. I know where I live, uh, where my mom lives in Michigan, while I would never think twice about, you know, getting a glass of water from the tap, there are definitely other parts of the state of Michigan where people are not able to do that. But what I'm saying here is that just because you've been living in Mexico and you are brushing your teeth with the tap water, if you're washing your vegetables with the tap water from the tap in the city where you're living, just because you are used to it there doesn't mean you're gonna be used to it all over the country. And that's just something to keep in mind when you're traveling. Number 15, don't throw your plate away. 
when you are out and you are eating street tacos and you've got your plastic covered plate, don't just dump it in the trash when you are done eating. The taco stand, the, the food stand reuses those plates. So they're gonna just take off the plastic bag that the plate is wrapped in and then reuse the plate. It's wrapped in plastic so they don't have to wash it. They're doing a lot of high volume stuff there. Number 16, try your salsa first. This is a lesson I have seen learned the hard way by many of my friends who've come to visit me in Mexico, as well as Taylor on several occasions. He will just douse his food in whatever salsa that's put out in front of him. You gotta do your own research. I always, I always suggest trying a little drop, maybe on a chip or even just on the tip of your finger and gauging the spiciness before absolutely dousing your food in it. Number 17, reservations are kind of a big deal. There have been so, 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 so many times where I've walked into a completely empty establishment, completely empty bar, completely empty restaurant, gone up to the host at, to ask for a table and have the person ask me in return if I have a reservation. I'm not saying that you're not gonna be able to get a table in that completely empty restaurant. I'm just gonna say they're gonna ask you for one. So a lot of times just to sort of avoid this weird interaction or just to make sure that a place is actually open, to make sure that it's not closed for a private event or just has different Google hours, Taylor and I will call ahead even if it's just 15 minutes and make a reservation. Number 18, don't assume everything on the menu is actually on the menu. When I am ordering at a restaurant in Mexico and I tell the server what I want, it's honestly, it's really, really common for them to reply back that they don't have whatever it is that I want to order. It's just a lot of times people will not be serving every single thing on the menu. So if you are getting your order ready, it's a good idea to have a backup plate or two in mind in case this happens because it does. <laughs> Number 19, kiss your mezcal. Mezcal is an alcoholic beverage, a spirit that is often compared to tequila, but tequila and mezcal are very, very different. And one of the ways in which they are different is how they're consumed. While just like in the US, in Mexico, it's normal to throw back a shot of tequila, that's not the case with mezcal. If you order a mezcal, it will come served in a shot glass, but you are going to be sipping it, sipping. And those little sips are called besitos, kisses. Number 20, soft drinks aren't your only option you have got to give limonadas and naranjadas a try in Mexico. Personally, I am a major, major fan of limonadas. When you order one, the waiter will ask if you want it with sparkling water, agua mineral, or with still water, agua natural. And I always get mine with sparkling water. It is so refreshing, so light, so delicious. Great for a beach day. Definitely give it a try. Number 21, Electrolyte is a lifesaver. If you wake up and you are crudo, cruda, hungover in Mexico, then electrolyte is, is what you should be reaching for. My favorite flavors are coco, fresa kiwi, and limon, but lots of different flavors. This stuff, it's seriously, it's a miracle, miracle juice in a bottle. Number 22, you won't ever want to leave. When Taylor and I moved to Mexico back in 2017, we told ourselves it would be just for a couple of years. Sure, there was a learning curve to start, as there is with any new to you country. But four years later, Mexico feels like home. It feels like home because it is our home. And it's difficult to imagine ourselves living anywhere else. As you prepare for your own move to Mexico, or if you're already working to settle into your new life, Remember that different isn't necessarily bad. It's just different. Adjusting is part of the adventure. I'm Alex from backpackingbrunette.com. Thanks for watching.